express trains have attained speeds of 80 km per hour since as early as the 1860s. Therefore, efficient braking has always been a necessity. Modern trains use a dynamic braking system which is a blend of mechanical braking and electric brake systems which rely on reversing the traction motors to electric generators. I will start with first explaining the working of a mechanical brake system that uses compressed air as these are the most prevalent systems in trains today. Air compressors supply compressed air to the air brakes. The air which is compressed to 700 to 900 kilopascals is piped under the car floors to maintain air reservoirs. The air pressure is lowered to 490 kilopascals by a pressure regulator and fed via the brake valve, brake pipes and control valves to the auxiliary air reservoir. When the compressed air in the brake pipes and auxiliary reservoirs is at 490 kilopascals, the brakes are not activated. When activated, the brake valve cuts the flow of air from the pressure regulator and the air pressure in the brake pipes falls. The fall in air pressure is directed by the control valves on each car. The control valves then regulate the flow of compressed air from the auxiliary air reservoirs to the brake cylinder. The brake cylinders then activate the basic braking mechanism to slow down and stop the car. The mechanical braking described above causes heavy wearing of the braking materials and generates a lot of heat. To increase life of the braking materials and to maintain energy efficiency, in modern trains, brakes are typically blended. When the driver brakes, first the regenerative brakes are applied. If more power is needed, especially in unforeseen situations, additional brakes are applied using the mechanical systems. Dynamic braking is particularly useful in helping control train momentum when negotiating slopes. Regenerative braking is used in vehicles that make use of electric traction motors. Electric locomotives and electric trains use electric motors for traction. An electric motor, when run in one direction, converts electrical energy into mechanical energy that can be used to perform work such as turning the wheels of the train. But when the motor is run in the opposite direction, a properly designed motor becomes an electric generator converting mechanical energy into electrical energy. This electrical energy can then be fed back to the catenaries for use by other trains and for saving of useful energy. In a regenerative braking system, to get the motor to run backward, the vehicle's momentum is used as the mechanical energy that puts the motor into reverse. Sophisticated electronic circuitry is necessary to decide when the motor should reverse while specialized electric circuits route the electricity generated by the motor into the overhead catenaries. Once the motor has been reversed, the electricity generated by the motor is fed back into the grid where it can be used to power other trains. Electric locomotives of the Razdani and Shatabdi Express trains using regenerative braking can return between 11 to 12 percent of the energy they consume. What are your views? Please share in the comment section. If you like this video and other videos on my channel, please subscribe and press the bell icon.